All right, people, so this is Ross. Our fig season is about to begin. Problem is, it's just, there's a ton of snow on the ground. And in fact, believe it or not, uh, tomorrow night, it's supposed to snow another nine or so inches. So that's really gonna actually slow our fig season down. What I really would do actually coming up March 1st, in the most ideal year is I would actually, there wouldn't be any snow on these tarps, on this cut and cover method, by the way, if anybody's interested, this is the cut and cover method of winter protection is that we essentially cut all the trees back to six to 12 inches. And then we cover them with straw, cover them with tarps, weigh them down with some brick. You can see that down there. And then the snow is actually helping to insulate them as well and actually keep the tarp from blowing away in the wind. But uh, what I would normally do around March 1st in the most ideal season, take these tarps off, take the straw off, expose the trees, and then set up our low tunnels. And our low tunnels are about three foot high. Uh, they're six feet wide, and that just fits the length of the bed, the width of the bed. And then of course, they're about 20 feet long. And the same thing goes back here along the, the back side of the, uh, the house here. So. Yeah, I, the unfortunate part of this is that the snow is here and it's gonna snow even more. So I'm gonna have to wait really before I can take the tarps off and expose the trees and put up the low tunnels. But that would be the most ideal scenario is we're gonna start our season actually two months prior to our average last frost. And these low tunnels really help warm up these trees actually during the day. It's a super sunny day right now. It's super bright. In fact, I probably should have some sunglasses on. But with all that light with the greenhouse effect of warming up these trees underneath these low tunnels really gets them off on a huge head start. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions regarding these low tunnels. So I wanted to address some things really quickly because I know some of you guys are actually doing this now, which is fantastic. Uh, it's really cool to see that some people are actually taking some of the things that I've been doing and, and actually going head first. Now, some of the things I may not recommend to everybody that I'm doing here, but um, certainly let me give you guys a little bit of a, a couple tips here. So let's see. The first thing I want to mention is that when we set up these, these tunnels is that the temperatures really start to rise during the day. I mean, it's like a 50 degree difference. So if it's really 50 degrees outside and it's sunny all day, it's gonna be 100 underneath these, these tunnels. And it might be different for you depending on, let's say, you know, how big your tunnels are, maybe the type of plastic you're using. Uh, but 50 degrees is actually what I'm seeing here. So if you, <laughs> are gonna keep your fig trees happy and healthy. You gotta keep them really below 90. So around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, even if it's 50 and sunny, you gotta come out here and you gotta roll up the sides just a little bit to let some of that colder air come in and cool things down below. We're really aiming for, by the way, with these low tunnels is not necessarily the air temperatures within the green, underneath these low tunnels, but actually the soil. So. At night, we're gonna come back in here and we're gonna roll the sides down. And that's gonna really help with all that heat that gets trapped in here, is it really is gonna help keep the soil warm. And these trees are gonna be probably really doing quite well. The other really key thing, and I know a lot of you guys, for whatever reason, decided to plant them as densely as I did. Um, I guess this is not a horrible idea, but it requires a lot, of, a lot more work and I would, probably if I was gonna recommend this to everybody, to the general public, I'd probably do like a low espalier, uh, a low cordon system, and maybe do like, if this is 20 feet long, maybe only do about three, three trees in that 20 foot section. Each one of them has arms that are three foot in length each direction. Um, and that would be enough probably for most of us and uh, really probably the best scenario for you guys. But for me, this is just something I'm trying here. And if you're gonna do it this way, because I know a lot of you guys actually have, planting them so densely, right? Underneath this tarp in this 20 foot section is three trees this way by 10. So there's 30 trees just in this little section. 
and there's another 30 trees in this little section. So if you're doing it like that, the really key important point here is in the spring, and we're gonna show you guys as we do it, but we need to thin out this new growth. The fig trees love to put out all this new growth in every which way direction, but if we do that, these trees are gonna be very dense and they're not gonna fruit. We're not gonna have the light penetration that we want. Even though this is our southern exposure, gets the most amount of light on the property, we're just not gonna have enough light penetration actually to hit the branches to form the fruit buds that we want. So it's really key, I think here, guys, if we wanna do it like this, to thin out those branches, and each tree, if there's three that are spaced two foot apart on center, each tree gets only four fruiting branches, and that's it. We limit it, we make sure that we come in here, actually, we're gonna to have to come underneath the low tunnels or take them down and then actually thin out all the new shoots when these trees start to wake up. So I would say probably roughly, if we're gonna get these low tunnels set up in the most ideal scenario, March 1st, which it doesn't look like that's gonna happen yet, but if we did, about 15 days later, these trees will wake up and they'll start putting out a significant amount of growth. So about March 15th, 15 days after they wake up, we wanna come in here and really thin out this growth. Um, we want to do it as early as possible as well. And that is just gonna guarantee that we're not wasting any energy. We're doing this as efficiently as possible. And also we're, we're really doing this right. So um, other than that, I think that's mainly the things I wanted to cover. And I think those are the biggest questions that people are gonna have. I wouldn't also, by the way, someone asked me about starting fig cuttings underneath the tunnels. I wouldn't do that because for fig cuttings, you really want a very stable environment and the temperatures just fluctuate so dramatically. Like I said, it's 50 outside and then it could be 50 underneath these tunnels or 100 underneath the tunnel. So you don't wanna do that. It's really not a good idea. Um, you want a very stable environment for your fig trees uh, when they're rooting. So again, I would probably, you know, temperature wise, keep this, these low tunnels around 85 to 90. Ideally, what you're looking for is not to blast them during the day, but to keep the nighttime temperatures a bit warmer than they would otherwise be. Hopefully the nighttime temperatures can stay above 50. Uh, that's really the goal going forward with these tunnels. And I hope to see you guys for the next one. Probably hopefully the next part of this, we're gonna take the, the tarps off, take the straw off, and then put the tunnels up and really be, you know, at the start of my season. So take care guys, we'll see you for the next one.